Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm your host Zulf and today I'm going to speak to you about video capture card software. What do I mean by video capture card software? Well, I've got a couple of angles set up here so I can show you what I'm talking about. And this screen here with this camera I'm sharing with you is actually the software I'm using for multiple video capture cards. So right now you could probably see here I have wide, which is one camera. I have twin cam, which is two cameras, that's three. I've got a desktop, which is basically showing my desktop, and then I've got only my screen. So right now I've got three cameras. One there, let me show you each one. One there, which is a Canon EOS webcam utility tool using a DSLR, still goes into the same software. Then I've got twin cam. This twin cam, you've got the Canon camera, as well as this secondary camera. But if I go back to the first camera, I also have this camera here. So it's actually a top down shot. So I've got one, two and three. Two of these cameras are working off HDMI capture cards. And I'm gonna show you now the software and explain why I use it and why it's handy to have and why it is actually essential to have because without it, you can't really make the full use of the HDMI capture card. So let's get into it today. When people get HDMI capture cards, I've got a full set of video where I explained how to set it up. But I don't think I explained as much about the software because I took it for granted. I thought, you know what, because I just did it, I didn't assume that actually some people need to know this before they can use it. So I'm hoping it helps because I've had some comments about this to share it a bit better with you. So what you do is you set up your camera, you plug in the HDMI USB side into your computer. It's all set and ready to go. What next? Well, you need some software. The software I use is OBS, Open Broadcast Studio. Let me share my screen and show you that. Uh, can I? I can. Desktop cam. Okay, that one there. So you can see right here at the moment, you can see my microphone because I'm recording this live. And on the right here is Open Broadcast Software. So that is one software I would recommend because it's nice and easy to use. There are loads of tutorials online about it, which is the best thing. That's why I'm recommending it because sometimes people like to learn in different styles you might not like the way i explain things but it's quite good what you can do is go onto youtube put in open broadcast software guide or tutorial or how do i set it up and you'll find lots of people doing tutorials on it so find the person that most relates to you and the one you're more comfortable learning from and you can pick up tips of how to set it up so there's actually lots of resource online about it so the idea is you record the software with uh, the feeds of the cameras everything goes into that and that becomes like your call it a tv studio because in tvs they basically have loads of cameras and it goes into like a broadcast room and then there they decide oh which camera angle shall we show but in this you're basically managing it yourself so if i show you the screen here this is where the cameras are all along here and these are different segments so if I wanted to do like a little uh, pop-up box on here, like, like you see on screen now, I've basically shown you a chat window. If I was to put my logos on, you'll see my logos pop up on my screen. So all these are overlays, which actually reduces the time you need to spend editing your video. So it makes it nice and easy for you. It's nice and light. What I mean by that is it's a small program. It's not going to take lots of space. There have been problems where sometimes it up updates and you lose certain features however if you have it set up in a certain way i know this probably is not recommended but i've switched off auto updates so now i know it works the way i want it to work and i don't want it to change so i leave it how it is and then every time i come it's ready and set to use all i will do is open the program up put on the cameras i have them on usb switches so i switch the usb on the camera comes on and then it allows me to use it and record i record the feed live and then the open broadcast software, there's a couple of menus where you can set it to save as an MP4 file, which then you can upload onto YouTube and then schedule. I've recorded four videos already. This is my fourth video about using software and talking about the things we share. And I've been able to make four videos in 30 minutes. They've been about 10 minutes each. 10 minutes each? Is that, that's that, what kind of maths is that? 10, 20, 30, 30 minutes. You can only make three. How did you make four? Because I'm, I'm, I'm still making one. And I'm over my 30 minutes. Okay, yeah. Bit of quick maths there. I thought I messed up. But yeah. So I'll have four videos made by the end of now. And that allows me to not worry about editing. I basically want to share what I know and help you get live streaming as quickly and easy as possible. So that software, I think, can help if you use it in the right way. At the same time, you can click another button and you can go live. 
So you've got two options. You can record it to your hard You can do both. You can go live and record it, providing you have a good enough laptop or a computer that you're plugged into. Because what will happen is as you're recording it, I can show you this. Let me do a quick task manager and show you how much resource it's using. So if I bring back on that screen there, you'll see performance right now. It's using 39% of my CPU. However, I'm also using 12% of my GPU. What that basically means is GPU is a graphics processor unit. GPU graphics processor unit and CPU is a central process unit. I think I'm the wrong way around. But yeah, what that shows is about 6% memory as well. So yeah, but I've got an i7 computer and a four gigabytes graphics card. So if you don't have that, but that's getting a bit technical, isn't it? I might save that for another video. But yeah, it's, I'm giving you an idea of what I mean by that. If you had an old computer from say like five years ago and you're trying to do this, you might not get the right frame rates. Your audio will not sync up. The video won't be as smooth. So there's things to think about. So it may not be the software. It may be down to how you're setting it up, which relates back to making sure your cameras and your stream is set up on the right setting. You may not be able to do 1080p. Think about doing 720p. If it gets your point out there, it shouldn't matter. People are watching this on their phones, so 720 might still look okay. So that's a bit of information about Open Broadcast Studio and the software you use for video capture cards because you can't just plug it and there's like another step involved for recording the feed. You could use one of them just for streaming if you were doing like a Zoom call or Teams call, but now I've given you a bit more information to help you get your brain thinking about what else is next where you can go potentially you could go live streaming you can make lots of videos fancy videos so i'll make a separate playlist for this and give you the next video so i'll see you on this next video about how to use your camera for live streaming